In this video, I just want to go over the moving averages that I like to use on my charts and note that the ones I use on the daily chart will be different than the ones that I use on the intraday chart. All right, we're going to start with a daily chart of S&P Cash. Okay, here you can see that it's the uh, daily chart here. And the averages that I use on a daily chart or higher, you know, so weekly or monthly, though I hardly ever do monthly charts, but I do look at the 200 simple moving average the 50 simple moving average, and then I also use a 5 EMA and a 13 EMA. Note that the 5 EMA is the one in blue, and that the 13 EMA is the one in red, and that if you have the 5 above the 13, okay, I consider that being in a bullish mode, and at that point I would be focusing on the buy side. Now, you know, just reverse it if it's the other way around. You know, if you have the 5 below the 13, then I'm going to be focusing on the sell side. Now, as far as um, the other moving averages, well, if you have all of them on the same side, those are going to be the highest probability setups. If you, for example, you have price above the 200 simple, price above the 50 simple, and then the 5 and 13 EMA combo is in a buy mode with the 5 above the 13, then you really want to focus on the buy side, okay? But just know that there will be times where you're not going to have everything together, but when you do, those are going to be some of the highest probability setups. All right, let's also take a look at a 30 minute chart S&P. So here I typically look at an 8 and 34 EMA combo. So if the 8 is above the 34, I consider that bullish. If the 8 is below the 34, I consider that bearish. Now it's not going to be right all of the time, but it can be helpful as far as, you know, choosing the right side to trade on. Okay, so that's what I use on the you know, 30 minute chart, five minute chart, any of those intraday charts. Now there's gonna be an exception though. There is a more aggressive entry that I can show you. Now, when I use the triggers, um, I do use uh, the 834 EMA combo. So here's an example of a trigger. Let's say that we had support here and then the trigger was the crossover. Okay, in this case, the ACE crossed above the 34 and then when it also took out a prior swing high, when both of those things occurred, that's a buy signal where your definition of risk is underneath here, okay? But if you do want to be a little bit more aggressive and get in a little bit closer to where the definition of risk is, you know, via the, you know, the levels that I give you, then you can try the 513. But you always want to test these and make sure that it's not giving you too many false signals because if it is, then you may want to stay away from it. But here, typically, this is just going to get you in a little bit sooner than the, um, the 834 EMA crossover. Anyway, that's, or those are the averages that I use.